In this week's episode, we're going to be looking at bricks and the hidden properties behind them. Can they be batteries used to hold a charge? If so, this would line up with what I've been talking about for several videos, the notion that cities are electrical and they are laid out just like grids. I didn't originate this, but I have been leading many clues onto it. This research comes out of the Washington University in St. Louis, which, if you didn't know, housed a World's Fair Expo back in the day. But they seem to be on to something in current times talking about bricks being used to hold a charge. This would line up with a lot of the researchers in the hidden history community because it seems as though these buildings are more than just buildings. Last video, we talked about the main building at Notre Dame, which took 4.35 million bricks. I've shown Fort Jefferson in the Florida Keys, which has 16 million bricks. And this is the Jetta Vanaramaya Stupa in Sri Lanka, which has 93 million bricks. Could it be that these bricks used in these structures are doing something more than we ever imagined? Let's see. Welcome back to Geomancy. Thank you for joining me. Today we're gonna to be talking about the brick, the building block of the entire world. And you know the main component that seems to be keeping things together. We're gonna to start with a brickwork in ancient Rome that archaeologists, as usual, stumbled across somehow. The brickworks of Tullus and Lucanus Domitius, two Roman noble family brothers, they started this brickwork and made the bricks that were said to have been used in the Colosseum, the Pantheon, and many other brick structures in ancient Rome. If you didn't know, Romans pretty much pioneered brick making, according to the narrative, we're told. They created the fired clay brick, the cooked clay, terracotta, meaning cooked earth. Um, this is, you know, some of the technology that they were said to have bring to the world. Roman bricks are pretty distinguishable for being long and thin, and also particular types of bricks for various specific features like mosaic, um, as you can see down here. Fast forward to the late 1800s, our favorite time period in the United States. We've got the layout of manufacturing bricks. So here, the Bulletin of the New York State Museum, they tell us in 1893 that bricks are usually made of one of the following three processes, soft mud, stiff mud, or wire cut, or dry clay. Now, these three methods will determine the end result, and then they go on to tell you that what is entailed, the processes and tools that are needed to create these bricks. If you want to read this, pause this and check it. If not, we're going to look at some pictures of the process. So here you can see the horse bringing the clay in. So we got two horsepower up there, it looks like, and, a, and one guy dumping clay onto the cart and then the cart gets wheeled over into the processing uh, house where guys like here are turning that clay into the mixture to make the bricks. Now bricks are made of clay and sand. I should also say, since we're talking about bricks holding power and storing power, um, what we have is we have clay so and and the redness comes from iron oxide so that's where you know the battery power can come from and then we're mixing it with sand so that's silicon dioxide that's quartz like i have quartz here so sand and clay this definitely seems already like some combination of something that's not just strong and durable but it has electrical properties and maybe um properties beyond that Keep that in mind. So anyway, we've got these reset gents here who look like they've been told to work the brickworks. And yeah, it's, it's not easy work, so my hat is off to them. This is what is entailed. After the bricks are formed, they then have to be dried. 
and they will lay them out in either tunnels like this or out in the sun to dry and then after the bricks are dried they have to be fired so the way that they fire these bricks are they stack them up into a large group like this and then they light the fire from the inside and this burns the bricks from the inside they let them cool then they go ahead and stack the bricks on railroad on railway cars and take them off to the destination wherever they got to go pretty laborious process right and consider that some of these buildings i mean bricks are everywhere so if this is what is done man that's a lot of work and a lot of labor involved just to make these bricks well i wasn't surprised to find that philadelphia was front and center in brick making in america and for 200 years it was america's preeminent brick making city i've covered philly enough so we're not going to talk about that right now but as we know uh, bricks are everywhere in that city now what i found is some of the history on going from handmade bricks to machine powered bricks and one of the major players was a guy named cyrus chambers who his story is bizarre and he was just a prodigy a typical 1800s whiz kid who seemed to have been born at the right time to do what he did so i'm not going to get into his early life but what he did do was he was told that he couldn't create a machine to make bricks. So he went ahead and created a machine to create bricks faster and more efficient than people. And pretty wild story. I mean, his machine changed the whole, the whole game, right? Before him, they could make 2000 bricks and it wasn't really that efficient. After that, man, they could make thousands of bricks a day. So here's his machine, the Chambers Brick Machine. And you can see in this diagram, kind of like in the image from before, the horse is loading the clay in. They load that into the hopper. It looks like they mix it with water. As you can see, there's a, a, a canister of water going down in there. So it gets the right hydration. And then the hopper mixes it and turns it into the clay it looks very much like a cement truck to be honest uh, and we're told that young 20 something chambers came up with this machine it cuts the bricks puts it on a conveyor and then goes ahead and dries the bricks pretty mind-blowing stuff i don't know how believable it is uh what do you think let's take a look at some of the most amazing brick buildings around the world okay we're gonna just see some of these brick buildings and see if you think that they would have been made with bricks produced using these methods first up is the church of saint anne vilnius lithuania okay the first thing i note is that this is brick gothic architecture 100% brick you can see which is very impressive because the thing about laying bricks is that if they're not level if one brick is off it's gonna throw the entire structure off um, not so easy to do by hand the 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 brick mason has to be very skilled to do something like this now you can also see the different types of bricks and shapes of bricks amazing stuff how are they doing this in 1500 we're told right now look at this section in the middle looks very similar to the house of blackheads in riga latvia which i've shown in previous videos uh down to the type of gables that we see and even the swirly decoration on them i mean i think it's definitely an indication that the builders studied the same book it's also worth noting that this region, this is the Baltic region, and I, I don't know much about this. I'm not going to claim to be some expert uh, geographer or historian, but I'm learning that these regions or this region has many of the same type of architecture. And interestingly enough, blackheads seem to be all over the place from the swarthy Swedes and Germans um, to 
you know, these House of Blackheads in Estonia and Riga and even this church in Lithuania. Interesting stuff worth noting. Speaking of Poland and the Baltic region, the next building will be this Malbork Castle in Malbork, Poland, 1274. Imagine just sitting back one day, watching this thing go up. I would pay to see that happen. And you know, you can see a tower in the back. You can see on the right side, we've got stepped gables with quatcha foils in between. So there's a lot of high level geometry and architectural detail, but most important, most importantly, masonry execution. It's like the builders at the end of the day, they know what they're doing. And you can see everywhere on this castle. This is the largest castle in Europe, by the way, the largest brick castle in Europe. It's actually the largest brick building in Europe as well. Mind blowing. What was it needed for? Was it built by men and women or other beings for other beings? I don't know. Next up is the State Historical Museum in Moscow. And here we can see examples of custom shaped bricks. You've got rounded bricks. You've got all kinds of different bricks that are going in angled bricks. Truly magnificent. I mean, six years in the late 1800s. Wow. And this isn't even the most amazing building there in Moscow. Interesting stuff. I wonder who really built this and why. And here we have a familiar friend, the St. Pancras Railway Station, which I've talked about and shown in a few videos in the past. But this is one of the most amazing brick buildings in the United Kingdom. Again, with that Moorish architectural detail, as I talked about, looking very similar to Cordoba in Spain. Uh, why would they do this in the UK in the late 1800s? It doesn't make sense, given our historical narrative. But either way, it's a very nice building. And again, this would have been done by hand. So consider that. We're going to Siena, Italy here to look at the Piazza del Campo. And this was done in the Middle Ages, 1338 to 1348. A lot of bricks all in this image. Pretty much everything looks like brick. Um, nice details, nice features. But what's interesting is that this was done just after the Black Death was said to have begun. And what was really going on with the Black Death? Who was dying The during the Dark Ages and the Black Death and all these different things? Interesting, interesting stuff. We're going to head to Spain now to look at the Las Ventas Bullring in Madrid, which is a bit more modern, we're told, compared to the other buildings done in the 20th century, 1922 to 1929. So right before this Great Depression, as always, we have some money to blow. Maybe this is what caused the Great Depression, is building all these buildings at an inopportune time when people were trying to eat. Um, and by the way, Spain was going through a revolution, or getting ready to, yet they had time for fun and games. It's hilarious, honestly. I don't even know what to think of these stories anymore. Um, but a nice building nonetheless, whenever it was built, for sure. And they say this is Moorish revival. Hmm. Maybe it was just Moorish. Maybe it was there and they revived it. They renovated it. Who knows? Some construction photos would be nice. We're going to look at one of the most amazing brick buildings in the Americas, Fort Jefferson, said to have been built in 1861 for the Civil War, right? Now, somehow they were able to get 16 million bricks to this exact location 
and build the foundation in the water build the wall and then go ahead and you know build the structure up it's amazing and what were they really protecting this doesn't make sense was it a jail i mean why would they take prisoners all the way here it doesn't make sense and and also look at that island it kind of looks like a dna strand leading to this hexagonal cell sitting in salt water so if the bricks are batteries then they can absorb some of this salinity from the current and create a charge i don't know just some ideas but here you see underneath, you see these arcades and vaults. How many bricks? I mean, 16 million bricks used? Wow. How many men? Or women? Or whoever? I just want to know who was involved in this. Because it's truly spectacular. Here we have the Sultan Abdul Samad building in... Malaysia. Now this is another Moorish revival style we're told done in three years from 1894 to 1897. Doesn't matter where in the world you go they could just throw things up in a couple years it seems like right. Nice nice brickwork. Um, really really just great detail all around. I can tell the domes definitely have been replaced a couple times or at least renovated but the brickwork itself seems pretty top class even down there in Malaysia the, the British brought their their best I guess but this is pre-British Empire the Rasmancha temple in India looking similar to an Aztec temple to be honest I mean, I'm wondering if the civilizations were connected in ways that we don't know. It would seem so, because buildings speak more than history books do. Now, you can see many different types of bricks. You can see the mortar. You can see long bricks, which look like the Roman-style bricks I was talking about. Um, wide, fat bricks. I mean, there's all kinds of bricks. They didn't discriminate here, it looks like truly amazing this this must be an important node on the grid just like the Jetavanara Maya stupa in Sri Lanka which believe it or not is the largest brick building in the world how many bricks do you think were used to make this 93 million that's right 93 million bricks used to create this in the year 300 AD. Now, I think this is when historians just make stuff up because they really don't have a good explanation. And they know that the further back things get buried, the less questions we ask. But it's not the case. I mean, how did they make all these bricks? How did they get them here? How did they lay them? I think we're talking about like high level magic. I think we're talking about something that is not spoken about. Some power. And again, it's a mound. So we know this is energetic. We know the mound represents the womb, the female energy. So this is, but it also has the spire on top, which is representing the male energy. So. These types of structures are pretty sacred and pretty special, powerful, energetic nodes. If you've ever seen Praveen Mohan channel, he goes to temples all over Southeast Asia and checks out some of the most amazing things and asks simple questions that the same questions I'm asking. How could ancient builders mass manufacture so many bricks 1700 years ago? We don't ask the crazy questions. We just got to figure these simple things out, right? Just the simple stuff. And then maybe we can get to the deeper questions.
but you can't just tell me this was built in 300 AD with 93 million bricks and not explain anything beyond that. It's almost insulting. This is why I feel compelled to, to do the digging that I do. And you know, you're watching, so you seem to be wanting to do the digging as well, which is great. And maybe someday we'll get further along. But that's the end of this. Now I do have a bonus. And this bonus is gonna come in like a flash of plasma beam to destroy old world buildings. What's going on here? Where is this? This is Petra, Jordan. Pretty amazing site. And I just found this panoramic, 360 panorama um, website, which is pretty neat. I'll leave the link and we can just check out some of these places. Now, this is just an exploration. I have no idea what is going on. I don't know much about the narrative and I don't know what actually happened, but I can tell by looking at this that this is an amazing place. And this is something magnificent. I mean, look at the scale of this entryway. And then we've got these three smaller rooms Wow, um, yeah, Petra. So this looks like the Southwest. This looks like Arizona or Utah. I mean, same stuff. And I will be doing some comparisons in the future of what I think happened out in this area. And I think it was something destructive, some weaponized form of technology that wiped this out. I don't think it was necessarily mud flood. I don't think it was war simply. I think it was something intentional to destroy these places and kind of melt them. And that's why, yeah, these you can look all over the place and you find these little entrances and doorways and I'm sure inside connects in various ways. I mean, even when you look out, right, it's fascinating. So I think this whole region just got obliterated and, um, yeah, magnificent. The amphitheater, right? Like what? Complete with press boxes and sports boxes. Wow. Truly fascinating. I just thought this was cool and also do note that this does look like the material of bricks, terracotta, earth, clay. So I think the reason why these buildings, if they were built with bricks, they were destroyed. And if they were built into the earth, they were done so probably to utilize the natural properties of this type of stone. That's all I got for this week. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share with somebody. Either way, take care, stay blessed.